Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today I'm going to be giving you a look at the new Corsair Dominator Platinum and it's their new uh, white and it's full RGB kit. Now we looked at the new Dominator Platinum uh, before. These are a lovely new white version. They come in uh, kits from 16 gigabyte up to 128 gigabyte and 32,000, 36,000 and 4,000 megahertz kits in lots of in between and funky monkeys. There's lots of uh, options that you can choose in between those um, for sizes and speeds and all of that sort of stuff. So at the end of the day, I genuinely like white hardware. So I'm quite excited to see what these look like. And I'm even more excited to see what they look like in my rig. So when you first pop them out, oh my days, they look like something else. So what they have done is if I pop one out, that's also what she said. As you can see that there is gold detailing. Oh, that's a plastic cover. I thought they were pearl then. Um, oh, these, they're actually, I was really dubious, I have to admit, we'll rip that one off real quick, but I was dubious about the gold details, and I actually think that is a really nice touch. Now, I still want to take them apart and anodise the gold red, but I think that looks like a very slick kit. Now, like I said, I am going to show you them in my rig, but what I can also do. So this is a test system I have in the office at the moment, and these are the older Vengeance RGB, and I'm just showing you for the difference in the uh, the way that the lighting um, shows up and the colors and the profile side of things to make them all nice. And we can obviously do different modes and all of that sort of stuff. You know the way it goes and they can do all different things. You've got waves and spirals and just the way that they change color can all be done all nicely. But obviously they're big blocks. I'd say that they're, they're more about, very much about the lighting at the top, but I thought it might be good for us to see a difference between a couple of different sets of Corsair white memory. Obviously, if this was going to be mine, then it would be very simple in that I would like red LEDs, but then because of everything else, I would end up having to go red LEDs with the other bits, but I might even like then mix it up with some white accents going on in there or something as well. Maybe even go back and change the memory to white to work against the other red lights. But either way, I obviously like red and white and I'd like to have a little bit of a mix. But what happens if we stick the dominators in? Now, before we even turn this on, because of the contrast with the cutouts for the LEDs, which are Capilex LEDs, I might add, and the dominator logo in the middle, they straight away, there's a lot more contrast there. So you can really see that white pop. But obviously on the top of the Vengeance Pros, it's just a frosted top. So you actually do get a lot more white in there, which is obviously going to be great if you're doing a uh, dedicated white build. This is the first post. Literally the first time I've turned them on, this is the auto mode that they've gone into. I think that's quite a good angle to be able to see the color choices down the side as well. I was a bit worried that the gold might not work, but once the lights are on, it just turns into a bit of a shadow, so you don't actually get to see that accent very well at all. Um, but that actually then kind of works in its favour. 
because you just see the other colours instead. I think it's quite a good choice. If I was really picky, I probably would have gone for a chrome kind of effect to have got more of a uh, reflection and that sort of thing going on. So with all the other lights turned off in the rig, obviously you know all the different modes that we are going to be able to go through. This is just fading through all the colours that it can do. It's actually nice when you can set your own up though. This is quite a difficult one for colours to do as well because it's going from red to white so you'll obviously see a bit of pink as it switches. Obviously red and white Tom, yes. And then they do lots of um, crazy sort of colours as well. Which you can set uh, alternating colours as well, same as before. This one's called water actually, and it's actually pretty cool because you can set the base color if you want. And then you can add the ripple color over the top. And it's something that you can literally play with. You, the whites, I've got to admit, the white's probably not the uh, best base color to go with. So if we were to switch it around, I'm literally just trying to show you this live so that you get a, a good idea about the, the options that you've got, but they're pretty much endless. You can do absolutely loads with them. Uh, but if it was me in my rig, then I would literally just bang them on red. Although that does look camera, uh, it does, it does look red on the camera, but it's not, it's a real deep red. Or I would just plump for white. And if I plump for white, then I turn the rest of the system lights back on and it does look rather sick. One of the things I will say about this memory though is because of that white top, it does give you a really nice, good um, amount of colour when they're not even on. With them on white though, what I can do is zoom you in because you do get a little hint of this to the naked eye. You can see there is a bit of an orangey gold tinge coming through with the lights because of the gold sides. It's not overpowering. It actually makes it look like the, um, R the white RGBs are a little bit yellow, but it's only at the side because when you look at them straight on, you can't actually see it. Now I did actually say I would be updating my own system and this is my workstation in the new place and it's actually rather dated build for me. It's due to get updated soon. That's actually a custom AIO there. Assetek actually made me that custom top. But anyway, I digress. You can see that I'm running some of the uh, original Dominator Platinum White Limited Edition that they did. Uh, they did have black tops, but I swapped some custom uh, tops onto it. And they're actually red inserts because the LEDs in the older models were only white. So I'm actually kind of excited to see what they might look like now with these new ones in. And here we have it. I think it works quite well with the build. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know the theme I like my system to have. But I do think that the new Dominator Platinum RGBs are a worthy upgrade for my old special edition ones. Like I said, they used to have, they were the contrast special editions. They had the black tops and then I put cable mod uh, tops on instead with right, uh, red inserts, which I actually really like. Uh, but the thing that I'm actually really torn about now is 
I have a new build where I have parts and I'm literally just try waiting to get through the reviews so that I can build myself a new system because this clearly needs an update. So I'm actually pretty torn because I kind of want those in there but at the same time I'm thinking I might have to put these ones back in and save the glory of those for the new build and all of the many cores that it might have. Uh, it's also going to be uh, for the regulars. In fact, no, I'll save the regular stuff for the end so you can tune out now, children. If you've had enough, I think they look the absolute nuts. If you're wondering about performance and overclocking and stuff like that, well, it's really going to depend on the, uh, the memory modules that you buy. And normally what I personally would say is buy the menu memory modules that you can afford and then overclock them to see if you can get any more out of them uh, rather than you know, buying a kit which you, you think are going to be really good overclockers because it all depends on the silicon lottery. It also depends on the batches because they may make a set that they're all the same chips inside, but then uh, in two months time, they may have been speed binned better or something like that. So for me to give you overclocking results is almost a bit of uh, smoke and mirrors because they're never going to be, they might not be the same later and uh, it's a bit different to CPUs in reality uh, because they can change the chips that are actually underneath. But nevertheless, you can get up to 4,000 megahertz and that's more than enough for most people now. Lots of capacity differences as well. Cracking look and obviously white hardware is really starting to kick in again. So that's a really, really good and positive thing. Good uh, color modes between them as well. Plenty of customization, ticks all the boxes really. Do you want them? If you do, you know where to go. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one a little bit more of a personal video.